And then my life changed. Just like that. Every single day. You've made it to another video, and today is story time. Story time Saturday. Sounds cute. I thought it would be a nice addition to uh, my channel. So today I'm going to talk about um, the day that my life changed about three years ago. Um, I was in a hopeless um, point in my life where I thought that I was going um, to literally die. I, I just didn't care anymore. I didn't care about the grass. I didn't care about the walls. I didn't care about the sky. I was not living. I was just existing. Um, I would get up and I would do what I had to do during the day to raise my kids and I would just exist and it was weird. It was weird. I w I'm not that person. I mean, I've been depressed before. I've been, oh, you know, I didn't, I didn't resemble the woman that I am today. I'd got a friend request on Facebook and I let it sit there for like a week. Um, because like I knew, I knew my life was about to change and it scared me because he is the love of my life. And I I already knew that. We we were, you know, together back in high school and I was scared of it then. And here I was, you know, 35 years old and scared of it again. I mean, it just I felt it. It was like So Three years ago today, I started talking to Paul again. And I felt myself slowly crawl out of that hole. And it was weird. I mean, I never, I've never really experienced anything like that. I never really experienced myself coming out of the hole. I mean, you know, when you talk about like the hole, if you talk to somebody with depression, they, they know what the hole is. It's completely closed around you. And here you are, and you see the light. There's light up there, and you want to come out, but you can't because every time you grab the walls, it's dirt, and it just crumbles. And it's like Paul put steps in the hole. I mean, he just put the ladder down in the hole and I climbed out. And I started seeing things differently. And I started breathing. And I didn't realize that I had become this beaten down person who was afraid. I was afraid to do anything. It was weird. Like I was that person back in high school that you're like, what are they doing? They're being crazy. I was that person that, that did all the things that like you just thought of it. Next thing you know, I'm hanging out on the, the roof or something. I'm like hanging off the ledge. I was scared of everything three years ago. I couldn't climb a hill without being afraid I was going to fall. I couldn't stand on the ledge and look down without panicking because I thought that I was going to just die. So Paul talked me into coming out with him one day. And... Um, and I wasn't quite sure that my life had changed yet. Um, he said, let's go on a hike. So I went, I'm like, I'm not really an outdoor person. I don't really do outdoor things. I, I don't really hike. Like, I don't like to get sweaty. I don't like to get muddy. Like, no. Um, but he talked me into it and I went. 
So we drove what seemed like forever to this one place that he said was like his favorite place to go hike. And I was like, okay, all right, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna be this girl. I'm gonna be the outdoor girl now. Um, and so we started walking um, into this really beautiful place. And like, it's a three mile hike one way. Or maybe a, a mile and a half. Yeah, it's a mile and a half one way. Three miles total. And he promised me that the payoff at the end was going to be the best. And I'm like, okay, sure. But I went and uh, because I, um, I didn't know it then, but apparently I would follow Paul anywhere just to be with him. Because he made me feel alive. He made me see the light. So we went and we were walking up this hill and I remember I'm grabbing his arm because there is a drop off like right there and all I could picture in my head was you're going to fall and no one is going to find you. I mean it is a long way down there and you're going to fall so you need to grab a hold. And so he looked at me and he's like, you need to walk on the outside. And I was like, yes, please, please walk over there. And I felt a little safer because it was like, he was my wall. And as long as I looked at him, I didn't see the fall. I knew I was gonna fall, but I held on to him and we walked up this hill and we kept walking and it got easier. And he starts pointing out all these trees and he's telling me this is this and this is that. And he's teaching me all kinds of things that I had no clue um, that I was even interested in learning. And uh, we get up to all the way to the end and there's this, there's this beautiful overlook. And I mean, it's like a 360 degree amazing overlook. And there's like, you know, there's like a bar you know, that goes around the end, and, um, you know, that kind of made me feel safe, but I still couldn't walk to the edge, because I just couldn't do it. It, it scared me. Like, all this open space, and it'll go all the way down, and I'm going to fall off. I'm going to be that person that falls off of it, and I was scared to death, and, but he held my hand. And he's like, it's going to be all right. Just look at the beauty. Just look at everything around you. And I just remember saying, this man's crazy. But I like it. But he's crazy. So we start to go back, or so I thought. We were going to walk the mile and a half back, back to, you know, our car. And um, I thought, okay, we made it. Now we're going back. Um, no. So there's this little bridge that crossed a crack in this rock and like the crack it starts out pretty big you know and then it goes down and then it turns and as it turns it gets smaller and smaller just enough for your body to go through and he says we're gonna go down that crack and I was like no we're not and he's like, we're going down the crack. He's like, I'm going to go down the crack. The, it's, it's, it's just rocks. You know, like, I'm just going to climb down the rocks. And, like, there's something really cool down there I want to show you. But you have to climb down the rocks to come and, and see it. And I was like, no, I'm not. Like, no, I'm not. And um, he just starts going. And then I realized he's leaving me up there by myself. Like, I can't be by myself. Like, I'm going to fall off this cliff. It's either I fall off the cliff or I fall down these rocks. I, I don't know, you know, like, what am I doing? And the next thing I know, he's going down the, the rocks, like, they're steps. And I'm standing there shaking. And I'm telling him, I can't do this. And he's like, yeah, you can. And so, the next thing I know... I'm climbing down these rocks 
because he's going to leave me up there by myself and I can't be strong unless he's standing next to me. So I get down to the first level and I'm crying. At this point, I'm crying. And I'm like embarrassed. I'm crying. I'm like, this is the first time we ever really did anything like this together. And here I am being a big baby and I'm crying about it. And he just looks at me and he like right in the eyes and he's like, I got you. You're going to be okay. It's going to be fine. Like, I will not ever let you fall. So, by this point, I'm hysterical. <laughs> Although that that part right there helped, I was hysterically crying as I was climbing down these rocks that were just big enough for my body to go through. And I'm shaking I mean, my legs were shaking, my hands were shaking, and I'm knowing I'm going to die. Um, we get down there, all the way down to the end, and I'm shimmying through rocks and doing things I've never done before, and we get down to the bottom, and I am just crying. Just a big release cry. Like, my whole world just changed. And it and I felt stupid and I felt crazy and I was like what in the heck just happened and then right then I knew my life was never going to be the same I mean this is it I just followed this guy down the rocks and in between this crevice that was just big enough for my body to get through and I'm standing there and I'm looking up at where I just climbed down and he put his arms around me and he said I'm so proud of you I don't think I've ever had anyone really honestly say that they were proud of me before he did he was proud of me and I like dried up, like my tears went away and I was still shaking and I was still confused and I did not know what was going on. I just knew that I'd follow him anywhere. I would go anywhere with him. And that as long as I was with him, everything was going to be better. So here we are at the bottom of these rocks and I'm, you know, I just got done looking up there. I got, dried it up, get mad now because I'm, you know, I'm angry because I'm embarrassed, you know, but he's still proud of me and he's hugging me and he's loving me and he's like, okay, so we got to go back the way we came. And I was like, I can't climb up those rocks. And then of course he laughed because there's, you know, this really easy way to get down to where we were. And it was like, you just had to walk around. But instead, he took me through the rocks, you know, because he wanted to see if I was going to blow up or something. So he showed me this, this cave and, or this, like, caved area. And, like, he told me a story and, like, I caught calm. And I saw these, you know, this different tree and this different thing. And I thought, well, this is neat, you know. And then he walked me around the easy way to go back up. And we walked back to our car the mile and a half. Now, when we walked up this hill and up this area, I was scared. And I held on to his arm. And I was like, I'm going to fall. But on the way back to the car, it took me about three-fourths of a mile before I realized I wasn't caring about that That embankment anymore I wasn't obsessing over the fact that I was about to fall and I didn't care anymore that that you know I was still worried about heights and falling and things but like I was gonna make it back to the car and I I felt like everything was okay 
And that was the beginning. <laughs>